Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Mr. Shua's Guide to Passing the 2015 Geometry SOL. The Virginia Department of Education just recently released this test item set with questions that they feel that you should know how to solve for the SOL. What I'm about to do is go through each question on this SOL, and hopefully you'll be able to watch what I do, and then when you take the SOL, you should be able to pass or possibly even pass advanced this year's SOL. Okay, enough of me talking. Let's get into it here. All right, let's look at this first sample here. What does this say? For what value of X is triangle ABC similar to triangle DEF? Okay, if you look at this triangle DEF here, if you turn it on its side left, 90 degrees, you should see it's just a smaller version of triangle ABC. And you should notice that the 30 lines up with the 15 on that side, the 36 lines up with the X on that side. So all we do is just set up a ratio. 30 is to 15 as 36 is to X. So here we have a fraction equaling another fraction. Anytime you have a fraction equaling a fraction, all you need to do is cross multiply. Cross multiplying, I get 30x equals 540. Divide both sides by 30, x equals 18. Okay, it's fairly simple. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Let's see what we have here. Type your answer in the box. Okay, what is the total number of lines of symmetry for this figure? Well, we have a letter H here. If I draw a line vertically down here, you see H looks the same on both sides of the line. If I draw a line horizontally through the H, we see the H looks the same on both sides of the H. So we have two lines of symmetry in this particular figure. So two is the number that we would place here. Okay, let's go on to, so those are the samples. Let's go on to the actual questions, okay? Let's see, which Venn diagram accurately represents the information in the following statement? If a triangle is equilateral, then it is isosceles. Okay, let's look at these diagrams. Let's see, in this first one, it says that some triangles are both isosceles and equilateral. It says here, all equal lateral triangles are isosceles. Here it says all isosceles triangles are equilateral. And here it says no triangles are both isosceles and equilateral, either one or the other. So out of our four choices, B is the one that matches because this says all equilateral triangles are isosceles. Here it says if a triangle is equilateral, then it's isosceles. B is our choice. Okay, let's go on to question two. The graph of line J is shown, okay? Which ratio represents the slope of a line parallel to line J? Now, you remember that parallel lines, they all have the same slope. So all we need to do is find the slope of line J, and then we'll have that ratio. So points are indicated on this line at negative 4, 4, and 3, negative 1. Those are our two points. I'm going to use the slope formula. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then just plug in the numbers. Negative 1 minus negative 4 over 3 minus negative 4. Well, negative 1 minus negative 4 is just 1 plus 4, which is 3. 3 minus negative 4 is just 3 plus 4, which is 7. So 3 sevenths is our slope or our ratio. Choice A fits. All right, moving right along. Next question. Click and drag the answers to the correct boxes. Okay. Let P represent Brent's works this summer. Let Q represent Brent takes a vacation. Symbolically represent the following argument. If Brent works this summer, then he will not take a vacation. Okay, if Brent works this summer. Well, that's P, because P says Brent works this summer. So P, then he will not take a vacation. Well, Q is that Brent does take a vacation, so he will not take a vacation is not Q. So P implies not Q. This little tilde sign here means not. P implies not Q. Okay, let's look here. Brent takes a vacation. Well, that's just Q. Q says Brent takes a vacation. Q, that's simple enough. Okay, the third one, therefore, 
Brent does not work this summer. Whenever you see these three little dots in a triangle like this, that uh, means therefore. So therefore, Brent does not work this summer. Well, P says Brent works this summer, so not working will be not P. Therefore, not P. So basically, you'd click and drag. The P implies not Q here. You drag the Q here, and you drive the therefore not P here. Boom, you're done. You're on to the next question. Okay, which type of construction is illustrated in the figure? So we have this figure here, and this extra line I drew here just to illustrate my point, and I'll show you why. Let's look at our answer choices. A, the bisector of a given angle. Well, nope, because there's nothing to indicate a bisector here, so A is out. B, an angle congruent to a given angle. Well, yes, because we see with our compass marks we see a tick mark here, a tick mark here. That's so you can draw the line here. When you draw the line here, you see the angle is congruent to the first angle. B is our answer, but let's just look at uh, C and D just to rule them out. C, a line segment congruent to the given line segment. Well, if you were making a congruent line segment, you would have tick marks on two sides to make a congruent line. We only have one on one side, so that's out. D, a line segment perpendicular to a given line segment. Again, if we were making line segment, we would have tick marks on both sides to make a congruent line segment. We don't have that. B is our answer. Let's go on to the next question. Okay, let's see here. The diagrams represent the stripes used to mark parking spaces on a lot. Based only on the information given, which diagram could be used to prove AB is parallel to CD and AC? is parallel to BD. All right, let's look at the first one. Here in A, angle C and angle D, they're consecutive interior angles. Since that's so, CD is parallel to AB. All right, then here we have angle D on this side and angle D on this side. These two together are supplementary angles. That has nothing to do with anything being parallel. So A is ruled out. Then let's look at B. We have angle C and angle D being alternate interior, interior angles, and with alternate interior angles, that means AC is parallel to BD. But then we also have angle B and angle D being consecutive interior angles. Since that's the case, AB parallel to CD, boom, B is our answer. But then, just to rule these out here, let's look at C. C, now in C, we have consecutive interior angles, which makes this and this parallel, but there's nothing here to make these two parallel, so that's ruled out. Then here, we have consecutive interior angles, which means this line and this line is parallel. Here, we have alternate interior angles, which proves the same lines parallel, okay, and there's nothing to prove the other lines parallel. So, so D is ruled out, all right, because... That's parallel to that, but nothing to say this is. All right, choice B is our answer. Let's move on. Given statements, if a shape is a parallelogram, then opposite angles are congruent. A, a rhombus is a parallelogram, which is a logical conclusion from the given statements. A rhombus has opposite angles that are congruent. Well, that's true. Here, I inserted a diagram of a rhombus. We have four congruent sides, and look, opposite sides are, or oh, excuse me, opposite angles are congruent. So, if a shape is a parallelogram, then opposite angles are congruent. We see opposite angles congruent. A rhombus is a parallelogram. Well, therefore, a rhombus has opposite angles that are congruent. Makes sense. All right, no need to go through the rest of these because they don't fit. Let's move on. Which figure appears to have exactly two lines of symmetry? Okay, well, this one appears to have one line of symmetry. This one appears to have one line of symmetry. This one appears to have one line of symmetry. This one appears to have one line that way and one line that way. Two lines of symmetry in choice B. Boom, we're done here, on to the next question. Which is the converse of the following statement? If A over B equals C, then A equals BC. 
Okay, you should remember that in with the converse, all you do is switch the if and the then statements. So basically, this becomes the if, and this becomes the then. And if we look at our answer choices, well, if A over B is not equal to C, then A is not equal to C. Well, that's not switching anything, so A is out. If A equals B, C, then A over B equals C. Well, look, the A equals B, C switched here. The then became the if, and the A over B equals C, that became the then. It switched B is your answer choice. Boom, you're done. Let's go on. Which graph best represents, let's see here, okay. Which graph best represents a line perpendicular to line K? Well, we need to remember, well, first, let's get the slope of line K here. So we have two points here that we can use. So the slope, if we rise, one, two, three, four, five, six, and run four, one, two, three, four. So that's six over four, which simplifies to be three over two. So the slope is three over two for line K. Now remember that perpendicular slopes are both opposite and reciprocal. So the perpendicular slope is gonna be negative four over six or negative two thirds. So we just need to find which one has a negative two thirds slope. Let's try here, down one, two over one, two, three. Down one, two, over one, two, three. Nope, that doesn't work. Let's try B. Down two over one, two, three, three. Down two over one, two, three. Nope, that one doesn't work. Let's try C. Down two over one, two, three. Down two over one, two, three. Nope, that don't work. Let's try this one. Down two over one, two, three. Down two over one, two, three. Looks like we have a winner, folks. Choice D. Okay, let's move on. Which statement describes the construction being illustrated on the rectangle shown? Okay, the construction here. We have two tick marks here. Normally with two tick marks here, we're making a line perpendicular, but let's look at our answer choices. A bisector of AB, well, that's true. Well, no, that's not true, excuse me. That's not true because the bisector would go through E if it was bisecting AB. B, a line segment congruent to AB. Uh, no, AB is long. No, there's nothing there. That's out. A line perpendicular to AB through point E. Well, it's a line perpendicular, but it's not through point E. So that's out. D, a perpendicular to AB through point G, not on AB. Well, it's a perpendicular to AB through point G, which is not on AB. D, that's our answer. Okay, let's go on. Four lines and four congruent angles are identified in the diagram. Which statement must be true? Okay, now the angles between lines M and N are alternate interior angles. And if alternate interior angles are parallel, are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So M and N are parallel because of the alternate interior angles. There's nothing else here indicating anything else is parallel. So only M parallel to N, yes. Only P parallel to Q, there's nothing to indicate that P is parallel to Q. We can't say that just because these match but they don't, be. if they were 90 and 90 each, then they would be parallel. But see, they wrote 89.9 to let you know they're not parallel, only M and N. Here, boom. Okay, question 12. Type your answer in the box. The figure shows JN, JN, and KM intersecting at point L. Okay, what value of X proves that JK, this side, is parallel to MN. All right, let's examine this. So we're told that uh, MLN is 39 degrees. This is also going to be 39 degrees, JLK, because it's vertical angles, and we know vertical angles are congruent. We're also told that uh, this is 61 degrees. So this angle uh, JKL is going to be 61 degrees because of alternate interior angles. 
Now remember, every triangle has 180 degrees, right? So if this is 39 and this is 61, we add them up, that's 100. So that means that this must be 80. So in order for them to be parallel, this has to be 80. So 3x plus 5 equals 80. So if we subtract 5 on both sides, we get 3x equals 75. Divide by 3, both sides, x equals 25. Boom, we're done. Let's go on to the next question. All right, given segment MP, which segment is congruent to MP? Now, if you're taking the online test for the SOL, there's a drop-down menu that has an option to pull out a ruler, and you can measure. I just added a ruler here. All you need to do is take the ruler and then go through each one of the dots and see which one is close to that measurement. And if I were to take this ruler and move it over somehow, TV would have the same distance as MP. So again, when you're taking the online test, just pull off the drop-down ruler and measure. That's all. Easy peasy. Next question. Triangle ABC is reflected across the x-axis, then reflected across the y-axis to create triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay. What are the coordinates of A prime? Let's see. Well, point A right now is located at 1, 4. If we reflect it across the x-axis, we're going to be at 1, negative 4. Moving the same because it's 4 up here. If we move 4 down here, 1, negative 4, correct? Then if we reflect it across the y-axis, if I go 1 this way, I go 1 that way here, we're going to be at C, which is negative 1, negative 4. So again, from A across the x-axis, it's going to be right here at 1, negative 1, 4. And then if we switch it over, actually it's not, it's just before C. It's not at C, just before C, at negative 1, 4. Negative 1, 4 is our answer with both reflections for A prime. Boom, there we go. Let's go next one here. Okay, a diagonal walkway cuts through a park bordered by two parallel streets. The Parks Department plans to add an additional walkway as indicated by the dash line segment in the figure. What's the value of x? Okay, so I added in this y here to make a point. 132 right here and then angle y those would be consecutive interior angles adding up to 180, right? So 132 and angle Y would add to 180. So if I take 180 minus the 132, that would give me 48. So angle Y is 48 degrees. Now that we know angle Y here is 48 degrees, well, here's a right angle. So that's 90 degrees. 48 degrees. If I add these two together, that's going to come up to 138 degrees. All I need to do is subtract 180, the total of the triangle, minus the 138, and 180 minus 138 is 42. So X is 42 degrees. Option A. Boom. All right. We're moving right along here. Next question. 